Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin here tonight, I just wanted to come out here personally and welcome every single one of you to tonight's event. This is truly one of the most special nights here in FAM as we get to crown and immortalize the moments of this last year, cover them in gold and place them in the trophy cabinet which is this movement's history. From LMFAO moment of the year all the way up to superstar of the year. Every single award that is presented here tonight is as important as the next and that is due to one constant. You, the FAM universe, the people who were there for every single one of these moments. You are the reason that they were made so special. Because of your reactions, your energy, your passion. You are the reason we do what we do. So with that being said, best of luck to everyone nominated here tonight and may the best man win. I almost feel as if me and you should be reintroduced. A lot has changed since we last had any business together. No, you don't need to worry. You can lower your guard. I'm out here on my own tonight. And no one's gonna come running down that aisle anytime soon. I just wanna talk. You see, Rom? Me and you, we're not so different. We share a lot of the same enemies. We appreciate a lot of the same values and we both have been screwed over time and time again that's something that everyone in AWOL shares we're all damaged goods people who at one point or another were slapped in the face and told that they were no good by the powers that be but at Faniversary we all proved them wrong and not just AWOL you too Rom you did the unexpected, and you defeated the biggest challenge that had ever been laid out in front of you, despite the entire world saying that you couldn't do it. You know, I've been battling around with this idea in my head for a while now. Should I ask him? Shouldn't I ask him? But at the end of the day, I already know what the answer is going to be. Because no matter how much of our values line up, or no matter how many enemies we share, what you want for this place, and what I want for this place, are two completely different things. You can say you're all about the new blood all you like, but what you really want deep down inside causes that to be impossible. You're more problematic than the rest of them, because what you want deep down inside is for things to go back to the way they were at the beginning, before FAM, when everything was fine, when BH and Andy got along, when Guns was a source of inspiration to you, when no one had cast Rannick aside, when you were all brothers. You want your brothers back, Rom, and I admire that. But where you see brothers, I see fiends, monsters, which need to be terminated. And that's why I know you won't join AWOL. I seek to finally kill the demons that haunt my past, while you merely seek to cleanse them. As I said, admirable, but something that stands in our way nonetheless. Which brings me to the real reason I'm out here tonight, to warn you. 
It's the least I can do for a man I have such respect for. Tonight, the Britmen and the Narkomas will successfully defend their championships. Then come Cyber Fan Day, the rest of AWOL will do the same. At which point, we're coming for the top. So whether it be you, BH, Andy, or Merck, one of you will become our number one target, and we will seize this empire. by the Smackdown Hotel and Fun Break Entertainment, FAM proudly presents the second annual FAMI Awards. It is the night we will crown the achievements of all the FAM superstars. The night we celebrate this movement here. Welcome to the second annual FAMI Awards. Hello, my name is Romar, and alongside me is my broadcast partner, Norm. The Norm. Let's get it right. We are coming to you live from the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City, and now coming to you live also is the special host of this year's families, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Dorn. One, he's wearing the wrong jersey, and two, he's he's just another YouTuber, just trying to come out here and take all the glory, knowing the platform that we have. Oh, come on, Norm, let's be frank, come on. This guy was actually invited by us so he can come here and actually represent the entirety of YouTubers in a good light. And which, in my opinion, there's nobody more pure, nobody more brighter than Sean Torn right here. This guy has given so much to the WWE Games community that we just owe him at least this much. Yeah, he's pure, all right, until you find some demons in his closet. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is N60 Sean and welcome to the Family Awards 2017. I'm genuinely stoked to have been asked to host this for you guys. I mean, Forever Movement this year has had a crazy year. Not only are they getting recognized by some of like the biggest names in the industry, not only are more people watching the shows than ever before, but the actual shows themselves are just getting better and better and better and more exciting to watch. And this, this event is essentially a celebration of all the hard work that goes into that. So if you've been here since day one, if you've just been watching this for the last year, if this is the first Forever Movement show you've ever watched, if you're just only here for one particular superstar, if you're a Black Heron fan, maybe you're a 2TM fan, for whatever reason you are here today, if you are in the arena, get up on your feet. If you are watching at home, smash that like button and show some appreciation for the mad year that Forever Movement have had. And it's been a mad year for loads of WWE YouTubers. Over on my channel, N60 Sean, we've had a crazy year, but none of that works unless you guys are there to support us as well. So I don't think the guys in the back are going to mind me saying this, but on behalf of 
all the WWE YouTube creators, genuinely, genuinely, honestly, thank you so much for supporting what we do because we love doing it and we can't do it without you guys. So from me, thank you very much. But before we get a little bit too emotional, we should probably crack on with, uh, with some awards, I reckon. And what better way with the unexpected moment of the year award? Because if there's, only, if there's one thing that ever remains true when it comes to fam is that always to expect the unexpected. I'm half expecting someone to sneak out from underneath the ring and just beat me up. And this year has been full of mad unexpected moments. So let's have a look at the nominations for unexpected moment of the year. <gasps> unexpected moment of the year. You are going to destroy the movement I created. And before you even got started, the first thing you do is bring in that weakling. Sitting on the sidelines, watching the others clash, while he keeps on babbling his mouth. Of course, you knew what you were doing. Bringing him in as the voice of a fan would not only antagonize every single one of your rivals, but he would manipulate people into believing that you're some sort of hero. And why wouldn't they do that? He is, after all, your twin brother. I told you I didn't want any part of this, Riddick. How's it going there, eh, Romar? Wait, is this true? Uh, he just had to say it. Winner of this match, and new FAM Hardcore Champion, Pandorino! What a dastardly! From behind, just assaulted Pandorino! No way, what's going on here? The Leo Ultimatum! Taking a strike into Gary! Hit him! 24-7 rule! That is it! No! No, no, no! Welcome to the Hardcore Ultimatum Era! I'm slowly It's hard to say that I'd rather stay awake when I'm asleep Cause everything is never as it seems Introducing first the challenger, the superstar, Sean Nova! Wait, wait, wait! Nova, wait! <laughs> the freaking coward attacking Nova behind! And look at Smash Nova Scarlet! Nova! He talks, reverses, and oh. falls it! And there it! Wait a minute! Oh my god, he's actually busting open! Submission match is up next! Whoa! Five to five! What? Oh no! Wait! No, hang in here, no! This no! Not now! What? 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 I cannot believe! I can't believe what I just saw! I mean, do you, do, did you remember back at at Fan First Three Four, where just a minute and fifty one seconds? I mean, all right, yeah, you know what? I'll admit that you know it is what was very unexpected for Shonova to actually defeat the Guardian Angel and end his tenure here in FAM in less than two minutes, to say the least. That was unexpected, but still, you know, what I mean, I mean, I was revealed to the entire world by history. I should at least get some sort of, you know. Some sort of constellation prize or something, but whatever. You know, Nova, 
Still, I cannot forgive his actions for what he did at the end of anniversary 4, speaking of which, joining a wall or actually being a part of a wall all this time in a quest to take over FAM. Now let's see what he has to say, the new Cyber FAM champion. not surprised there are a lot of things that I do that are unexpected look at my record I won the Intercontinental Championship in a fatal four-way table match my first match by the way I've won millions of dollars from OTP in one match notice how I barely brag about that I can eat a travel cup of applesauce without a spoon ladies wink wink I can cut a promo better than the whole roster and look better than them too Hell, the hair on my upper lip is more over than a lot of people here on this roster. Just last year, I came back to FAM unexpectedly, and I was all that you people talked about. The list goes on and on, but let me give you the classic. I beat 40 men in one match, and now you can say that twice. Why, you ask? Because say it with me. No one has ever eliminated me. Ever. So why would you be surprised that I beat the big bad Baron in just over a minute? It's the same reason why I'm not on your favorites list. It's because I am the truth. And the truth hurts. You look at your Rombusters, your Rannix, your BHs, your Mercs, your Andy Badwolves. All of them, consciously or subconsciously, gave off the notion that if you bow down and praise me, then you will be rewarded with an invitation to the glorified kingdom of FAM. But people like me know differently. It's not about how many followers or subscribers that you have. It's not about the memes that are made of your doofy face or the fact that you contribute nothing other than your good looks. It is about what you bring to the table. And what me and mine bring to the tables are bodies. We bring results. We bring championships. We bring victory. Speaking of victories, Treira versus Ben McKenzie. Tonight, the winner faces me for my Cyber FAM Championship in an event named after said championship. This is what it's all about. The opportunity to face me for this. Now, I'm not going to question why the Cyber FAM Championship match isn't the main event in an event called Cyber Fan Day, because we all know why. What I will ask is what makes any of them think that they can beat me? Trey, the man that needed his world to end in order to be in the same show as me. The man that a lot of you posers claim to know, but really don't. The indie darling that has sold out so many bingo halls and made your grandmother change her plans, but he's not 100% worthless. I've had the pleasure of seeing his skills live in a living color, and he's one of the most talented people in the tournament that I have no problem facing. And what can I say that hasn't already been said about Ben and Ben McKenzie, an SES reject. His career highlight is being meme-worthy at the 2014 Royal Rumble. He's less famous than his criminally talentless cousin. And a guy that might as well be in the back making sandwiches instead of being in the ring. But he's not making sandwiches anymore. He has busted his ass to get to the finals, taking the initiative. And no one can take that away from him. He has a huge chip on his shoulder that rivals mine. And our potential match would rock the house. Any one of these men will. And that's why they're fighting to get a match with me. All my matches get people talking. And I will always come out on top. And that right there will never be unexpected.
Well, look, congratulations are in order for Sean Nova there because look, whatever your feelings are about him right now, he did, he took the world by storm and shocked everybody by defeating Darren in such a fashion at the anniversary. He, he defeated him in under 90 seconds. 90 seconds, all right? That is deserving of unexpected more of the year, all right? However, we gotta move forward from now on, folks, because we have our first ever match of the night as the Brit fan gets set to defend their tag team championship and they will defend it against the legendary team of the Skill Foundation. Now, at the anniversary, both these teams competed in a five-team tag team turmoil match where the Britmen actually won those titles by last defeating the Resurgence. These two teams never actually crossed paths back at the match at the anniversary. However, now things are different. After that ambush back at the end of the anniversary and after again the second ambush back at one of the row twos here, yeah. Things are a bit different and more personal to say the least. Will AC Arthurs and Eric be able to prove they're more than just that win at the anniversary? Or will the Skill Foundation reclaim their place on top of this tag team division? And there they are, the former champions. Also, one of the most dominant tag teams in FAM history and actually one of the most capable here in the entirety of this movement, the Skill Foundation. Though they must be feeling a bit as in the underdog situation because over the last couple of months, not only have they lost the tag team championships, but they have also been in the radar of the Britman. Oh uh, yeah, I have to agree with you right here. This one of the most dominant teams here in FAM, especially under the uh, tutelage of 2TM. And for that to all come to an end at Famniversary 4, kind of heartbreaking for them. However, tonight though, they have a chance for retribution. Tonight, they have the golden ticket to win back all the gold, I should say, in this tag team tournament. Here come the reigning tag team champions, the Britmen, who were in cahoots with Bash, that's Angel, and everybody else in the army of AWOL, which was honestly at the end of anniversary the most shocking thing I have seen throughout the entire history of this movement. I, I still don't know how or what to think about it here. I, I, I guess from what we heard earlier, you, you can see some points there for why it was formed, but. It, it, I, I, I'm still on the fence about the whole thing. I just wanted to be on the fence about Norm. In my opinion, these guys are just a bunch of punks along with Bash just coming out here trying to take over FAM again. Like we've never seen that before here, but we all know how that's gonna end up. At the end of the day, light is gonna outshine the darkness. And before we even get into that situation, they have to go to the skill foundation. As a reminder though, these two teams never actually cross paths head to head in that tag team turmoil match back at the anniversary. But now, this is a different situation. This is what it means to truly define yourselves as the kings of the tag team division. As we look upon the Britman, this may be the shortest. If these two actually lose their first title defense, that you can only just imagine how much it will just put a dent, a huge dent, off the shield of AWOL. Well, let, let, let's not think that too far ahead here. We have two very capable men in the Britman and AC Arthurs and, and Auric there, so who knows? If it is one of the shortest reigns we see here tonight, that, hey, that, that's another unexpected moment right there. And you can be sure that the Skill Foundation are going to do whatever it takes to make that moment happen. And here we go, the first match of the night. And it's for the Tag Team Champions. And already, oh. the Skill Foundation doing what they do best. And that's tearing their opponents apart, limb by limb. And starting from the bottom, all the way to the top with that uppercut. 
I tell you what here, Skill Foundation is starting off hot already. My God. Here we go. Northern Lights suplex. And they already take it out of Brickman and CS with an elbow drop. Springboard style. My God. Taking taking AC Arthurs off the, the apron there for a second and just go away and look at this again. Eric had no chance to prepare himself for the beat down that the skill foundation had in store for him. Just look at this. Double kick. Oh my god. From the chest to the back. Norlight suplex. And follow it up with a beautiful bona fide elbow springboard style once again. Oh man, and we're going right back into action here. Beautiful chop right there. And this is what the Skill Foundation does best. And let's trap their opponents and take them down limb by limb. And decimating them, they will do it over and over again until they get the job done. Here we go to the cover. One, two. Just the two count. Just a two count. It has to be expected. Oh my Ooh. god. He missed that wild kick. Oh, but speaking of being wild, look at that. Just onslaught. Oh! and just caught him with one punch right there. You know, like I said, or actually, as you said earlier, these two have never faced off before. They actually were able to evade each other during that, that turmoil match. But now, one-on-one, -on -one, or two-on-two, -two, I should say. Oh, my God, beautiful. It's going to be a different situation. It could be over, a situation could be over already. Oh, but LS saves the matchup. And stop paying. CS there with just one punch. That's that's you know what does he think he is? Saitama for one punch, man. That's that's incredible. <laughs> Speaking of punches now. More getting on a beat down! And the skill foundation right now are in a they're in unfamiliar territory right now. They've never been they barely are in a situation. Oh look at that. Oh my god. That was smart. That was very smart there by AC. You know what? They did that earlier to him and now he's just returning the favor. That's like what I said. You can barely see the skill foundation have their own game being played on them. Now going to the corner. And speaking of playing their own game now, now the skill foundation are the ones that have their own, their own tricks being used against them as they're being tackled down on the uh, opponent's corner. Oh! Got busted right there. Oh, and the cover, this could be it. Not enough. So close to retaining the Tag Team Championships right there. You're right, Norm. The more punishment they dish out, the closer they get to finish off this matchup. As again, Eric now just pummeling on CS and just... That's the ruthless side that they've been known for throughout their entire career. You know, there's a lot of things you got to think about when you, you see the Britmen, especially guys from from the European uh, area, these guys are going to be, they have that side of them deep down and you're just seeing it come out here tonight. I'm seeing it come out right now. He just foot stomped CS right there. And look at that, without a carry in the world, just showboating. I don't know if he's trying to give his opponent a fair chance or actually just toying around. Oh, wait a minute now, it will cost him. Oh my God. Exploder suplex right on the ropes. And like I said, right now he was just toying or trying to toy with the skill foundation and ended up costing him big time. Boom! Right there with an exploder suplex onto the ropes. Just dazing poor Eric. And now look at that. Reaching out for that tag there. And same goes for the skill foundation. Both teams are at the death throw. Oh, wait a minute! AC orders! Once again taking down the skill foundation, or at least from the top rope, all the way to the floor. And look at that. Smart move right there, tagging himself in. Very smart move, and just like that, LS, he's not feeling anything right now. He's just dazed and confused, and, I, and you know what? I don't blame him. At one moment, he was reaching for his partner, the next thing you know, he's out on the ground. Yeah, and that's all because of what the Britmen are doing in this match. Oh, wait a second. Seafire DDT. CS right now 
It's, it's, right now, it's a little shot of adrenaline, but it only lasted for a, a moment. Only a moment. It could be enough, though, to win him over and actually allow him to make the tag towards his partner. Oh, uh, we'll see about that, but that, I have to say, that was beautiful. The teams that are fighting for the tag team gold right now are at a stalemate once again. Whoever makes the tag first will gain control of this matchup. And at last now, back on the apron as AC Otters is about to reach for the tag. And he does, Eric tags in. But at last, tags in as well. And here he comes. Uh oh, oh my god. Chomp after chomp. Going for a close line, Ducks. Ah, now one for his own. Shoulder tackle into the corner. What the hell is he thinking? Oh! He thought he was going to hit that drop kick there and Goomba stop. Never mind. He missed that stop. Oh, but he caught him. He caught Alas. Oh, but Alas might have caught him instead with a German. The action in this match has been hot and intense. Just like the intensity being shown on the part of LS right now. And this could be the, the death nail for the Britman. He has a little bit of fireman position. What's he playing right here? This could be it. Oh, I see right now. CS pointing up. They're going for it. They're going for the blackmail. I can feel it. Oh, wait a minute right now. Whoa, whoa. Arthurs. Oh, my. Otters was about to evade and interrupt the move. Oh, but gets caught. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to spell bad for him. Oh. Power bomb onto the outside. Smart move. And just like that, the back game fouled on LS, which allowed our Eric to actually take advantage and escape the hold. Tenacity being shown. He just wait. What was that? Oh, I think AC wants to finish this finish this match up here. Am I sensing a bit of tension between these two already? I mean, they just want the tag team titles. This makes no sense. Well, look, these two have been competitors in the past. Maybe the past is starting to catch up with them. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe that's just their style. You know, they're 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 aggressive. And, and oh, wait, what what what? What's going on here? Oh, I, you know what? I, I, again, I, I just have to bring up that they, they've been competitors in the past. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait. Atlas, you champs. Oh. 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 Jesus Christ. That almost was the half of the clean kill by AC Arters. Right, he's going to deliver the second half. There it is! Clean kill! And this is it. And the Brit men retain the FAM Tag Team Championship. Jesus, man. We gotta look at this again. This is what set up for everything that just transpired. My God, what a headbutt. This, this is after. AC Arthurs interfered with that super blackmail the skill foundation we're about to attempt and actually nail. But this, this is not the, 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 the part that, that got me confused. This is right here. When these two were, these two are such a cohesive team right here. They're the tag team champions, still retain after all this regardless. Where is on them, but the fact that there is tension between these two already, I don't know. It just baffles me right now. Still tag team champions nonetheless after delivering that massive clean kill two times on poor LS. And this, once again, I'd like to point out, Norman, look at this. When LS was about to go for the pin, AC Arters didn't even attempt to bring it up. After that, he nailed him, yes, but I don't know. Maybe that was the plan all along. I don't know either. Regardless, the situation is the result. The Britmen retained the gold, and they are still your FAM Tag Team Champions. And you know what? Give it up for the Skill Foundation, because they proved here tonight they actually had what it takes. They are a formidable tag team. They've been an FAM since the beginning. However, tonight, 
once again is the Brit Men's Night, regardless of the tensions that's being that was being shown earlier in this matchup. And the question remains: which team will step up again to challenge the Brit Men? I don't know who, but they better bring their A game to the dance. The tag team champions of AWOL. You know, it was once upon a time where a young boy from Boise, Idaho had nothing but high hopes for a better future, no matter how harsh the circumstances were in his everyday life. And after all that time, he spent on his knees praying to the big guy in the sky, preparing his soil for all these years just to get that one drop of rain from the heavens. But his dreams finally came true when he was granted a chance to make history in this here movement. Oh, but the journey does not end there. Here I am advancing into the finals after a very high stakes competition with Brandon Young. But sadly, all I can remember was the announcers calling him my name and my vision beginning to fade. But as I began to regain consciousness, all I could see was the six foot four, 280 pound blur staring across from me. And believe you and me, it was unlike anything I've ever seen before. But my entire life, I've always grown to learn two things. One, to never let the world run you. And two, only you can decide if you want to be your own trademark or just another statistic. But Ben McKenzie, you've not only taken the first shot, but you've taken a proud moment in my life that I can't possibly get back now. And now you've made this personal. So come tonight in the finals, it's not about McKenzie versus Ira. Oh, no, no, no. It's about Trey versus Ben. And when it's all said and done, not only will I climb the highest point to overcome the Big Ben himself, but I will, and with all due respect, I will defeat Sean Nova at Cyber Fam Day for the Cyber Fam Championship. In my personal opinion, you're not a wrestling fan unless you look at a ladder and wonder if it's tall enough to uh, climb up and retrieve a belt which could be hanging from the ceiling or whether it's sturdy enough to smash someone in the face with or if you uh, see a table and you're not thinking how hard would I have to powerbomb someone to smash someone's body through that table. And I mean, that's just, that's just the, the domestic objects. Like, heaven forbid you actually come across like a kendo stick or a sledgehammer or a baseball bat or something. And Forever Movement has had its fair share of hardcore moments over the last year. I mean, not all of them have had to have involved weapons. Some of them have just been brute force with God-given fists causing irreversible damage to whoever's on the receiving end of them. So we've got, we've got an award to commemorate this brutality and let's have a look at the nominations for Hardcore Moment of the Year. Hardcore moment of the year. Sure is ideal, tossing gout desperately like the piece of trash that he is. Oh, I'll show you piece of trash. Right now, though, you know what? He's gonna end up being like a piece of trash, though, if he fails his mission to take out his master. Oh my god, the stair! Jesus Christ! What did I just see? Look at this again! 
look at this again. I, not even I can believe what I just saw here. Darren Dashley catching him in the back of, the, of his, his head, his neck, connecting with the still steps. It's over, dude. It's freaking done. There is no way you get him after that. He's gone right in the table. But where the hell is he going? Uh, same question. I don't know what the hell Pantorino's thinking right now, but check out the monster right where you want him. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. Wait, wait. No. No. You gotta be kidding me. Pantorino. Pan, no. No, no, Pat, Pat, you can't, you cannot, no! Oh my god, this man has a death wish! You just can't! I beg of you, no! No, 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 not even I want this! No, nobody want this! He has a death wish right now! I can't agree with you! Don't do it! Please, no! Get back down! Not like that! He's about to finish it off with a- oh no! Oh boy! Oh boy! No! No! Merc! Good night! What? <laughs> Man, he just busted his eardrum! Holy s***! <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Holy s***! <laughs> my god! He's squeezing the ear! That's a blood! <laughs> I cannot say that I am surprised. Pandorino, rightfully so, earning hardcore moment of the air after diving from the tiny drum. We're talking about 50 feet in the air just to take down Roberto and win the hardcore championship. Which, as a side note, unfortunately only lasted for about two minutes until that dastardly Darren came in and just took the dream away from this young man. That was a great, that was just a great moment right there with Darren Dastardly. I, I have to say that I was absolutely surprised, but then again, 24 seven, what do you expect? And again, we're not talking about Darren Dastardly right now. This is the moment for Pandorino. At Famniversary, I climbed on top of a 40 feet high stage and took a leap of faith that changed my life forever. As not only did it win me back my hardcore championship, but it also cemented me as the king of hardcore. And that's what this award right here means. It means that I am El Rey. But as you all know, this son of a bitch came in at the end of that match with Robert and stole my crown from me. Not cool, not cool. You have no idea how not cool that shit is, Mr. Dastardly. Now, as you all know, I am a man of few words. After all, fist first, words never. So I'll keep this short and sweet. Dastardly, whatever you do, no matter what, you don't mess with me.
Even if you're stupid, which you very well may be, you can understand it. I am the king. I am the king of hardcore. You officially put yourself into your own coffin and send it off to the cremation chamber. You have decided to enter a division that you know nothing about. And for that, well, for that you gotta f pay. Hardcore is no f joke. And you're going to learn that the hard way. And that goes for anyone else in A1 too. You can do whatever you want. But when you interrupt in my business, that's when you will suffer. Anyone who cares to stand by the side of Dastardly when I tear him bone to bone is free to come along and suffer the same freaking fate. Thank you everyone, good night. Tonight, the FAMI Awards is host to the finals of the first ever FAM Invitational. Eight top talents from the outside world, yet I made this tournament my own, whilst only giving you a glimpse of what I'm capable of. Trey Era, tonight I finish what I started after your match with Brandon Young. I'm gonna leave you laying in the middle of that ring yet again, bruised, beaten, and unconscious as I stand over you with my arm held high in victory. Which brings me to you, Sean Nova. I'm not concerned with tonight, but you're different. Desperate. Always looking for some form of power. You and I have never crossed paths in one-on-one -on -one competition, but I can assure you that come Cyber Fam Day, you will have wished that it stayed that way. I don't care if you're fighting for FAM or for AWOL, you will fall at my feet just like the rest, because when you fight, you want relevance, and when I fight, I strive for dominance. <laughs> It doesn't all have to be hardcore brutality in Forever A Movement. We like to have a laugh as well. We like a chuckle and a giggle like the next person. We love a fat man and a midget dressed up as Italian mobsters. We love cantankerous community managers and the plethora of other personalities in this movement which get us chuckling, giggling, ruffling and all that good stuff. So this is a, this is a new award to celebrate the comedy in uh, Forever A Movement. So let's have a look at the nominations for the LMFAO Moment of the Year. <laughs> LMFAO Moment of the Year. right? This is unbelievable. What is Ward doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ward! Thank you, Brian! Let's go! Wait, what is he doing? What, what is he about to do? He's setting out. Wait, Harold Wait. 3! Harold 3 just ended with the belt! What? Chapter realized it. Oh. 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 What? This is. Why did he just eliminated himself? Uh, is this cipher? What an idiot! And he realized it. And heard all three. Ah! And that's what he gets. Champ. You. Did 
Quiet! I told you the freaking goofball. Over ticket, citation. Come closer, I ain't waiting. Girl, party like there's no tomorrow. So pop them bottles. Yeah, girl, pop them bottles. Yeah, girl, pop them bottles. Yeah, these chicken nuggets in that town. Yeah, that's how the mafia operates. Yeah. Oh, mamma mia. Crazy. Hey, hey. Oh, what? Wait a minute. Oh, no. What how tiny is on his underwear and is that a Tom Costi out what? Why am I next so cold? Oh, oh no! No! no. They, they pressed me! Go and change now! Okay, okay, Tony! How about going? Four! Wait, the referee's counting! Oh no! Well, nice. Wait, wait, wait! What are you doing? Six! Oh crap! Tiny! Hurry up! Seven! Ah, oh, screw this! I'm not doing myself! Let me show you how big Cody's offer it! I know you want it, and I do too. Baby girl, I'm trying to live with you. No, you want it, and I do too. Baby girl, I'm trying to live with you. I know you want it, and I do too. Baby girl, I'm trying to live with you. No, you want it, and I do too. Baby girl, I'm trying to live with you. Are you listening? Well, you know what? Brian Four has given us so many ridiculous moments here that winning the LMFAO moment of the year becomes no surprise here a little bit because I thought that the Mafia was going to win. But regardless, congratulations to Brian Four. You know what? He probably rigged this to win this. This man is a magician. He's a hacker. He is something. Because every time he comes here, something bad happens where, you know, like some something gets frozen or something gets thrown out. of. I don't know what the hell to think anymore. Not to mention they actually banned the noob from actually participating in the Rumble. That's, you know what? I've seen a lot of debuts here in FAF, but that one right there, I think takes the cake and all of the, and, and everything when it comes to shock when it comes to just impressions when it just come here making a literal impact he impacted the servers that's only he could do something like that yeah it takes the cake and it takes everything else like the net code and features and so many other things I For this this guy some kind of wizard or something this guy he just knocked us offline like that well okay I think we're all back up and running now yeah okay yeah, we are we're back okay we're back folks so now it's time to move on to our second match of the night as the wicked one L takes on the little psycho Eve in a diamonds debut rematch these two ladies last cross pet all the way back to survival 2016 where the atmosphere was very different back then they were both fighting to prove that women's wrestlings actually belong here in FAM. Today though, at this moment, things are different and things are personal. Elle loads everything that Eve represents, while Eve is simply trying to defend her honor. With the animosity between these two diamonds ramped up to 11, Lord only knows what kind of match we're in store for here. Who knew all along that inside this woman was such a dark side to a point where she just snapped. She went from being the heroic L to the wicked one after, you know what, I don't blame the situation of her being upset and being frustrated, but to go on a limp just like that at attacking Eve at the end of the anniversary and aligning with AWOL, this is not the same L that we've known throughout the entire year here in FAM. Uh, I might not be, but... Uh, I, I, I'm gonna admit, I kinda like the new attitude. All of the new attitudes, I think it's an entire new person in general. L, this is not the same L as I said before. This is a new L when it comes to attitude, when it comes to philosophy, and just when it comes to straight up tenacity and fortitude. And 
And here comes Eve Heron. The proud wife of Black Heron. Now, unfortunately, Famniversary wasn't such a happy ending. Not just for her husband, not just for her, but for FAM in general. And she was one of the victims after being DDT'd on a table by L. Just so it could be a declaration of war on the part of AWOL against FAM. Now though, in this Diamond's debut rematch, Eve will finally have the chance to not only get payback on L when it comes to winning that matchup, but also payback on L for the amount of punishment she had cost Eve at the end of the anniversary. Here's a good question about this, right? Because we saw Eve come out during that I Quit match. Do you think L saw this and maybe that was a bit of retribution that 2TM couldn't do and she just dished it out on her instead? I don't know what the hell L would even think about trying to interfere in that matchup to begin with. L had nothing to do between Black Heron and 2TM. And right now, Eve though, trying to dish out some bit of embarrassing posture on L. All on a second down, rebound from the rope, and over the ropes they go! And a coastline. Now you wanna talk about the new attitude and the new tenacity, you gotta talk about Eve. After being under the tutor for Black Hair on Black Heron for so long, you know what? Earning a bit of uh, practice comes with the territory. Well, I knew she could handle herself, but now we get to finally see it, my god! Well, a tick for Tat right there on the part of L. And again, I think the roles have officially switched from this previous three year onwards. Because before, we thought that L was the innocent one and Eve was the predator. And right now, like I said, roles have completely reversed. Either that or just L had just taken this whole cycle thing a little too far. And look at that, a nice little bell right there. Wicked Hurricane Rana! Popping out from the apron, landing on Eve and just tossing her out whiplash style. Oh, and look, that's gonna continue the uh, the attack here on on Eve. And I gotta say, again, I'm, I'm starting to like this, even if it's a completely new person, complete new attitude. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, she's going for the black and gold power bubble. Oh, never mind. Reversing with a pop-up drop kick. Yeah, a beautiful counter right there. Oh god. Ah, beautiful counter to part of Eve. Is she going for it? DDT! And she nails it! And this could be good night for L! Spoke too soon, but you can't deny the athleticism of both these two young women. Look at this right here! Pop a power bomb! Getting the cat-like reflexes to finish it up with a drop game. Speaking of reflexes, to go underneath and follow it up with a jumping DDT. Gotta give it to both these two athletes. And look at the height she got on that before spiking her down there, but only two. Absolutely. And now L setting up. I'm sorry, so Eve setting up L for revenge time for survival. Oh, wait a minute, no. Springboard. Oh, oh golly. What the hell was that? What the hell is this? Gory submission. No, wait. Oh no, swish it. Oh, Jesus. It's done. We make it 2 0 for L. But Eve. Eve kicks out. Barely at 2. I'm pretty sure if that was hit on anyone else, they would have been out 1, 2, 3. This match would have been over by now. And uh, that's one of the pros of being under the tutelage of Black Heron. Oh, and look at that. A little sass right there from L. Oh! Whoa! Eve reverses. I believe L was going for the top of La Rasa, but uh, Eve was prepared for that one. And L was aware of the situation and kicked out of that just in the nick of time. Reversing and dropping as well in the process. Oh my god. What the hell? These two going back and forth, and Eve with the nerf, this kicks. Oh, they didn't kick with the last one. L kicks of her own. My god, it's like saying a bunch of freaking ballet dancers high on acid. Whoa, the beauty flight. My god. Going for the cover. Win for Eve. What? That's Eve's ultimate move. But you know what? The resilience of L here. Just being able to kick out of that. Amazing. And you can, you can tell me right here now, and I will tell you you're right. The old L wouldn't have the 42 to kick, would have kicked out of that. No way, I think. This new attitude right here, this new 
this new Tanok Ferocity, I should say, on L is giving her a perk or two as well. Oh, hold on now. Sp what? She was going for the ropes, I believe. Slice bread! And it's over! What? These two women have no quit in them whatsoever. Eve! With the heart of a lion, still manages to keep this match alive. Oh, she's going for it again. The Nabula Rasa. Oh, but Eve once again reverses with a pop her Karana. Oh, she's trying to go for Bloody Valentine. But Elle was ready for that. Oh, and a spear taking down Eve. And a little psycho is down and out. It's gotta be over. Are you kidding me right now? How do you come up from this? First of all, like I said, these two going back and forth between their kicks and they are ready for each of them. L was hit face first with the beautified by Eve. And like I said, being familiar with that move gave L the wherewithal to power out of it and kick out. And same goes for Eve. She knows L so much that she manages to reverse most of the moves that actually L dished out on her. But not this one. Oh no, able to come back in and take her out just like that with a sliced bread. But with all the big moves that these two have given out to one another, they have shocked each other by kicking out. Now with stalemate, and right now Norma can feel it. This is the end game. Could be end game for Eve though. Oh! We're going up the turnbuckle now. Iron District. Hell no! Wait, 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 wait! The silent scream cross face! Shades of her own husband, Black Heron! She's tried two of these moves now, and this one actually actually connects. This one actually is wrenched in! This one is gonna give the win over to Eve! Oh wait, wait, wait! Spoke too soon! Hell now! Oh! Getting nailed in with that kick! And Eve going to the top rope and gets caught by L. Maybe spent too much time there. Oh! She was going for a hard for Roderick top rope, but oh my! L with that ferocity once again, popping back up, catching Eve, and I'm going to attempt to have Karana one last time! Off the top! Oh no! Oh no, my god! Black and gold! Power Bob! Following it up! with the bloody valentine and Eve gains retribution one for one on Eve if only if it wasn't for that spiked elbow pad of, of Eve's right there I don't think she would have won this match I don't know what that you're talking about the point is Eve finally gained the win that he's been, she's been dying for for an entirety of a year ever since survival. Now that their demons have finally been slain, finally she can move on and actually conquer this entire Diamond's division. Oh no, there's more demons than that. Like I said, that's a spiked elbow pad. That should have been disqualification right there. That shouldn't even be allowed to be in the matchup and she was used to Look at it, right there. Right there. What, battle pad or not, the fact that she hit a black and cold power bomb from the top of the rope. Well, would you look at that? You did it, Eve. You, you actually managed to get one up on the woman that beat you last year in the Diamonds debut and actually de defeat her this time. Well, well, congrats. You know, Eve. I'm not like my brother, you know, I'm not like Renick. So even though you're married to a complete snake in the grass backstabbing psychopath, I'm not going to rob you of any opportunities here in FAM, okay? And I'm going to prove it right now. Since you managed to pick up a victory here tonight, you're going to be next in line to challenge for the FAM Diamonds Championship against Jin at Cyber Fab Day. Oh yeah, high five! So it's official now! After Eve finally gained the win over L, 
She now has a chance at the FAM Diamonds Championship against Jin at Fam Day. So loads of superstars come through the doors of FAM with the goal in mind of reaching the pinnacle and standing on top of this great movement as its champion, as its commander and chief. I mean, it's one thing to get through the door, but then it's another to make a name for yourself once you're here. So this next award honors the people who managed to do that. The people who managed to escape the generic noise of what everyone else was doing and it stood out from the crowd as a true breakout superstar. I might have my eye on this one for uh, next year's FAMI Awards. Here's the nominations for Breakout Star of the Year. Breakout Superstar of the Year. What is this Mohawk freak doing here? Jen! Jen Kishner with that Jen Shasha! The Jen Shasha! Jen has done it! No! Jen has taken the throne! Jen has become the new FAM Diamonds Champion! I woke up in yesterday at the very same time in the very same way, yeah, I... That's the radar! He doesn't give a damn if you're a man! Are a monster! He's gonna seek vengeance and he's gonna take you out! Don't do it! Please! No! Get back down! Not like that! Oh my god! The king of five court is an absolute understatement! The more it's your favorite record spinning that you've listened to a thousand times. AC Arthurs! The former NGC champion is coming and he has arrived here at FAM. Here he is, the glitch himself. Eric has made it to the movement. The Britman. Congratulations go to AC Arthurs and Eric. Once again, the new FAM tag team champion. The so-called chosen one by Redick. Madness has taken over the night and chaos has credit victory for Rafazo. Just waiting for a change. So get out. Liam Ultimatum, you call him? Yeah, I call him the ultimate backstepper. Title from Pantorino. Welcome to the hardcore ultimatum era. You've gotta be kidding me! Him? Darren Dastly won br br Breakout Star of the Year? Yeah, and he's making his way out here with security who look kind of familiar, but that doesn't matter. The Hardcore Ultimatum is here in the building. The Breakout Star of the Year won that reward because he broke 
the dreams of Pandorino and crushing the sole victory he gained by defeating Roberto by jumping off the freaking Titantron back at the anniversary. Again, there's they stole this award in my eyes. <laughs> Uh, they say you'll never become of anything, and look at me now. Are you awake yet, FAM Universe? All this time ago, all I ever received was you can speeches. You can be in FAM if you impress Rannick. You can be at Famniversary if you beat Frisco. You can stay in this movement if you get a contract. And while many doubters and unbelievers came, I stuck to the only thing that I could truly count on. Myself. So to you, FAM Universe, everyone in that locker room, and all the people who I've crossed paths with, if there is anyone doubting you in anything remotely challenging, remember this. You can't. Only I can. I attended the FAM Royal Rumble with no contract. I got to go to Famniversary. I was one of the chosen AWOL members. And most importantly, to everyone firsthand, I am your breakout star of the year, and I am your new FAM Hardcore Champion. As for the former champion, Pandorino, well... <laughs> I'm well equipped with two men that will be willing and able to stop you in your tracks at all costs. With that being said, uh, let's talk about this hardcore division, shall we? Starting with Pandorino, the symbol of or unorganized stupidity in this movement. Just by watching some of his matches, I thought I'd never left the outside realm. I mean, seriously, the guy throws his body into everything so recklessly, it's no wonder you all are fans. He epitomizes your everyday lives, crashing and burning. No, no more of this, this carelessness, no, no more of these high spots, no more of the recklessness. Your new way of living has come, and the hardcore ultimatum era has begun. And if I have to eradicate every single piece of scum like I did to Pandorino at Famniversary 4, then let this be the example. <laughs> uh, uh oh! Here comes Pandorino, the insane lunatic, and he wants payback. And here comes the familiar security, and they're going to feel the pain of Pandorino! Oh god! Steel chair! And they're gonna. Wait a minute, no! Rafazo! Rafazo! Coming out of nowhere! What? He just came in and hit the spider's web on the hardcore champion! Oh, oh no, oh, this is not supposed to be a night where we're supposed to attack champions. This is supposed to be a night where we celebrate things. Celebrate Darren Dashley being the breakout superstar of the year. Nah, not do this. Oh no, oh no. Oh wait a minute, no. Pandorino was Dashley all for himself. Oh God. And he takes him down. Rafazo didn't appreciate that one, I think. He just wanted Dashley, he wanted to make a statement in the hardcore division. And he takes on Pandorino now what? And now these two are about to get it on in this ultra to battle. Insane Clown versus Insane Lunatic. And the hardcore icon is going to go head to head with the clown himself. Oh my goodness. What are we seeing right here right now? We're seeing an all-out battle take place in front of our eyes all over the the hardcore ultimatum. And Destiny right now, being as devious as he is, counting his lucky stars because of the situation, has a window to escape the battlefield. The smart man, look at that. Hightailing it, getting it out of here. 
all over me. And now it's again Pandorino comes back up from the grave and takes down Rafazzo. I don't know what the whole origins of the story is. Who, who, who wants to be here when these two crazy people are doing this? But nonetheless, he has a win over the founder and Pandorino is setting him up for the muscle buster. And nails it. This is a sign and a declaration of the hardcore war. Hey, you bums! Enough! If there's one thing that doesn't need to get out of head, that is the hardcore division. Could you imagine if you gang of freaking lunatics were running around here fighting all the time? Oh lord, the chaos, no way. So here, chill the hell out and listen to Romy, baby. Cause all three of you are going to have a chance to get your hands on each other at Cyber Fem Day when you three compete in a triple threat match for the Hardcore Championship. So, Merry Christmas to you all. Wait, ah, crap, I meant to say Happy Holidays, aren't I? Look, the point is, if you all keep being bad boys, Santa's going to put you on the naughty list and take this match away. So damn it, play nice! Seriously, where is the Red Bull? I'm freaking dying here! My yes, things are finally starting to get heated here at the Hardcore Division. Dastardly is sure they have no chance of defending that title in a triple threat match. But that is a match for another time, as for now, we have another history making match to witness as the two finalists of the first ever FAM Invitational Tournament are set to do battle. Dan McKenzie, ruthless and dominant, inserted himself into this tournament and hasn't looked back since, takes on Trey Era, an honorable man who has fought tooth and nail to get to this point and just like Ben, is not looking back. However, only one of these men can win and go on to Cyber Fam Day to challenge for the Cyber FM Championship and we're about to find out who that's going to be right now. If you haven't catched up with all the road tools yet, ladies and gentlemen, don't, don't rub your eyes, that right there is Ben McKenzie, the new and aggressive one. And quite honestly, I've never seen him being as capable as he is right here, right now in his entire career. Him, he just forced himself into this tournament. This was meant to be a tournament for FAM outsiders, if you catch my drift, right? But Ben inserted himself in a dominant way by attacking two of the contenders and finally, if you can say it, reaching into the finals against Trey Era tonight. Let, let me put in the correction right here. He didn't force his way into it. You know, we could have found someone else, but Rombuster decided, hey, why not? You took out two people, you've earned an opportunity when he really did not. I mean, I'll be honest right now. I mean, my brother, yeah, I know he's crazy and sometimes, but that's this really a controversial decision. I mean, I get it. He's, he's friends with Ben. But still, underheaded tactics should not be allowed in a competition for a championship such as a Cyber FAM title. But here is a man who took no shortcuts to get to where he is. This is the man who literally flew all the way to the finals here as he shot down opponent after opponent and that's why we call him the aerial assassin Trey Era. 
Yeah, you know what? I've followed this man a lot, and he's done a lot in his journey here, especially making his way to the finals through this tournament. He has nothing but respect for his opponents, but I think that might get thrown out the window when it comes to Captain McKenzie. You can call him Captain McKenzie all you want, but as a pirate he is, he stole the spot in my eyes at the same time. Not only that, he ambushed Trey Era at the end of the last semi-finals. So the respect you're talking about beforehand, I think, is out the window before this match even began. Let's be frank. Exactly. Trey Era is not going to hold any respect for Captain McKenzie here, nor is he going to hold back. And I hope for sure he's not going to hold back here and he's going to grab what he needs to grab here. No, he can't afford to hold back, especially with the new ruthless side of Ben McKenzie being on display right here. And tonight, with such stakes on the line, you can be damn sure that Ben is not going to let an inch on Trey. And the finals of the FAM Invitational Tournament are underway. Ben McKenzie, British Trey era, here at the second annual Family Awards. Only one will advance to meet Sean Nova, the Cyber FAM champion, at the end of this journey. And by the way, look at the size difference between these two men. And I've never known Trey to be a tall man, but even at this stage, look at it. I mean, I'll be frank right now as well. We're talking about Ben McKenzie. Look at that. Just tossing Trey era like he was a sack of nothing. My goodness. Oh, oh what the? Did you hear that? I think that's that damn dumb Ben. The slap of disrespect. But never mind. Look at this. I have never heard such a slap in my entire life being heard throughout the entire arena. Right throughout Hammerstein, my god. But again, the assassin following it up with a back roll pounces back. Throw thrust, and he's got Ben reeling for a moment. Oh, oh, oh. what the? Look, he just, he just landed on his feet. What the hell? And Ben is irate. This is the ability of Trey Hitter right here. Dude. Being caught right there with a soup bone on the part of Trey. Again, though, as I tried to point out earlier, Ben McKenzie, I, he's been gone for almost a year here in FAM. And he, he balked up the sick list. And he's... Oh, my God. A difference here. But Trey Era landing on his feet, but not that time, as he's been caught by belly to belly. Beautiful movement here is by Ben. But, oh, my God, going with those overhead belly to belly suplexes. Just look at the eyes of Ben right now. He just doesn't care. He's just looking to tear apart Era limb by limb until he gets the job done and walks out of here as number one contender. What did he say during those road twos? Uh, he was, you know, just like in Arkmus, both of these guys tired of these, these outsiders coming in here, taking away their opportunities. And Trey, he looks at Trey Era as another guy taking away an opportunity he could have had. Uh, again today, because of Ron Buster being the general manager right now, this FAM has become the land of opportunity, not just for the members, but for outsiders to make a mark as well. Indeed. Oh, but the mark could have been ended right there with a boot. Oh, but Trey. Trey's heart still beats on this matchup. He understands what's at stake here. He has a chance to go to Cyber Fam Day and, and face off against Nova. And he might do that. Or he might meet his downfall in the hands of the so-called captain of FAM and Ben McKenzie. Oh my god, look at these chops and oh! Ah, oh, Buckaroos right there! And these two are gonna nail each other back and forth with- Oh! Did you see that? Glasgow kiss! Oh, but it was enough! That headbutt that we call the Glasgow kiss was enough to put Era down for the count. Jesus Christ, yeah, he kissed him right across that forehead and knocked him out almost. Man, he knocked him out permanently. If he was, I'm telling you right now, if he was even deeper with that head, that would have been it. I absolutely believe it would have been. Oh, Jesus, look at it again. Just looking back at it is freaking devastating. And it hurts my throat just by looking at it. <laughs> But this is not the end of the matchup right now. Trey Era still in this match. Ben McKenzie should not be allowed to let room and let Era take up. Look, that's what I meant right there. Trey Era, the Era says that he is, pops up and shoots down McKenzie. 
but was it enough? He's so fast and so agile, this man. You, you can't give this man any room whatsoever. Oh, you can't give him a room to ride up as he's doing right now. Once he into the corner now. Following up with a drop kick. Setting up for the doubly dare. Yes, he does. Oh, boy. Uh oh He's lifting up the captain. Oh, maybe it wasn't enough. He can't pick up the loot. I think he was going for his signature isolation kick, but that wasn't happening right here. Oh! But he got caught. Ben McKenzie did with that hurricane run over the ropes. Oh, must be going over the ropes. He timed it, actually. Oh! Oh! What the hell? Like a freaking bull. He freaking tallied him. And he leapfrogged him and got landed on the steel steps. And there it is. Oh, lay indeed. What a suicide dive. My God! And now the aerial assassin! I can't get oh. God! Oh my! Jesus! What the? Oh. What did I just see? He just... Okay, well first we saw that right there, but... This is... To, he's going for the second attempt here to really take out Ben McKenzie and... Look at this! Just caught him off the suicide and bopped his head right up... I don't know what you call that. No, no, no. You can't. You can't. Call, there's no move in the list for dead. That was just. I don't that know. That was a catch power bomb into a into an end game, and it's over. One, two, no. The what? Era. After going through deck, I don't even know what to call it. Still manages to put his shoulder up, but again, the captain was going for it, but he misses. And Aero's gonna take advantage. Uh oh, going for the kick. Going for setting up. Buckshot. Isolation kick. Connects. And this could be it right here. We got ourselves number one contender. No, we don't. It's gonna take a little bit more. Oh, that lowered stampede knee. This has gotta be it. If it don't know what the hell, oh that stampede knee. Ben McKenzie, the new Ben McKenzie, I should repeat again. It's not gonna get, he's gonna let himself get thrown out of this competition, just like that. Yeah, you saw him go for that. He was going for a buccaneer knee. Yes. Only to end up getting caught right there. Boy, end up with that. With a stampede knee now, but nonetheless, Ben McKenzie One. still found the wherewithal to grab his shoulder, lift it up from the mat, thus letting this match continue, and the number of contendership still remains a mystery until then. Oh, Trey is looking for another one here, it might be. Oh. Oh, what the hell? What? He caught him with the half Nelson and tossed him over. He made them freaking didn't walk, made them walk the plank. He made them fly over it. And that Buccaneer boot might be near. There it is. And the Buccaneer end is what I like to call it now. No. Huh? No. Era. Era still lives. Era still breathes. And the aerial assassin has got plenty more bullets in the clip. But no. He was trying to go for the alley up on the ropes, I think. The same move that destroyed so many of the other contestants. Oh, that's right. But wait. Oh, God. Jesus. These strikes from Captain McKay. Oh, my God. Out of nowhere. The assassin pops. And so does Ben. Stampede. Stampede me. Out of nowhere. One. That's got to be it. No. What? What? What will it take to finally put this to an end? Honestly, you can never, you can never close your eyes for even just half a second. 
these two can pop out of nowhere and nail the biggest of moves and call the match out right there from underneath their opponents. Look at that stampede knee from out of nowhere. But it was enough. That's the shocking part. I'm still shocked. Now there's so many attempts to end this match. Not one of these two is willing to go down for the count. My God, so much has happened in this matchup, and I don't, I don't know what it's going to take there, but Ada going back to work here as he should. Oh boy, he's going for it, Norm. I believe it. This could be it. He's going to set it up. Oh, he just went to the corner. Buccaneer, oh my God. End game. Oh my oh. Lord. Oh man, no. That's it. No! Huh? No, the foot on the rope. The foot was on the rope. Era with the instincts of a veteran, even though he's not here on this movement just yet. Whoa. Oh, wait, 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 whoa, what? Whoa, 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 why? He just choked out the referee. Ben, right now I see the game plan. He's a madman! I knew Ben McKenzie was crazy, but not this gosh darn crazy. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh, oh! What? Phoenix splash into the step in D! Era has done it! Era is the number one contender! And Era is going to Cyber Fem Day to meet Nova for the Cyber FAM Gold! My lord! What an amazing finish by Trey Ida to take out Ben McKenzie, but, but look at all of this that led up to it. After Ben just rebounded with a Buccaneer boot, he was going for it and going for it that overboard, as he would like to call it, and finish off Era, but it was not to be. As even though he connected it, it just wasn't enough to put this young lion down for the count. Actually, it would have been enough to correct myself. It was solely because of his, his wherewithal, his instincts to put his leg on the bottom rope and cancel out the pinfall, which actually made Ben turn his insanity up to 11. Putting his hand in the official and choking him out momentarily. Indeed. This wasn't even the insane part. Take a look at this. Yeah, you talk about insane. Ben McKenzie beating his head against that exposed turnbuckle. And then once again, trying to go for that overboard. Once again on Trietta, only for self to catch it and turn it into a Phoenix Stampede knee. And finish off Captain McKenzie. So now we know it all. Now we know that Trayera is the one that is probably destined to reach for the stars and go beyond. Get ready for this, get ready for this. The Supernovas, high five, high five. Okay, this time, you get it. Ladies and gentlemen, this weekend at the second annual Family Awards, we will crown our second ever YouTuber of the Year, cementing the most impressive and phenomenal YouTuber of this last year into the FAM history books forever. Overall, I am so proud of what the YouTubers have been able to achieve this year, from holding the Grand Championship for more than two-thirds of the year to that epic 7-on-7 seven -seven match we witnessed at Famiversary. Everything the YouTubers have touched this year has turned into gold, and I'm not the only one who is proud. After consulting with the new FAM General Manager, Ron Buster, we have come up with a special surprise for this year's YouTuber of the Year Award. A surprise that we gifted to the winner upon receiving his prize, so best of luck to everyone who was involved in the award, and may the best man win. If anything's ever going to give you trust issues, 
it's wrestling. I mean, it's all well and good knowing the difference between a snap suplex and a Fujiwara armbar. But the real skill that you need when negotiating this business and surviving in that locker room is who to trust. Who are the good folks and who are the reptiles? Well, we're celebrating the reptiles in this award. We're rewarding nastiness with this one. So uh, there's been some great backstabbings, some great double crossings happening in the last year at Forever Movement. And we feel like these actions should certainly be rewarded at the FAMI Awards. So here are the nominations for Double Cross of the Year. Double Cross of the Year. over there who's now going to be the birthing, shining symbol of the future and an example to any YouTuber who tries to cross me or my territory again. By the way, Deco, you're flying. Oh! oh no! 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 No, Owens! Ollie Davis! Wrestle Talk TV! Powerful friends, my friend! Powerful friends! I was going Perkins! I already got to compete with this! Wait a minute. Wait, what, what's going on here? I am a satellite, out of control. Wait a minute! No, no! That's not the plan! Oh! Holly Davis! Look always! Just nailed Kushni! That's not the plan! Kushni just got backstabbed by his so quote unquote powerful friend! BH is dominating with the skill foundation! Who can stop him now? Nobody! That's so. What? 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 What the hell just happened? The era of Black Heron is over. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. here and disrespect the god of FAM, the man who was betrayed by BH by having his eardrum busted open during that I Quit match. How dare you laugh at him? The man that not only betrayed BH, but betrayed FAM in its entirety. Finally, the people have spoken and their voice have been heard. And it says, and I quote, Merc, you're a backstabbing, actually a two-time backstabbing SOB. And you know what? I tend to agree. 
Unbelievable. How, just slanderous nature of you and these, these scumbags that you are listening to, to disrespecting the god of FAM. Uh, but you said, you said a god, but this so-called god was made to say the infamous words of I quit by the hands of the Messiah back at Famniversary. Oh, and we haven't, heard, we haven't even known how he's feeling since then. All we know is that this guy hasn't given up on trying to proclaim himself as the so-called god. This has now become the second year in a row that I've won this, this stupid award. I mean, double cross of the year. I'm a freaking god. I should be worshipped, not insulted by cheap awards. This basically means for the last two years, what? My actions have been more despicable than anyone else on the roster? Is this what that means? All I've tried to do for the past two years is survive by any means necessary. You all saw what happened when Rana came to power. Nobody was safe from his wrath. He ended careers without blinking an eye. He put people's lives in danger. He had no remorse. Just a monster set on destruction all because of vengeance. I had to do what Ever I possibly could to stay on that man's good side. So yeah, that meant I had to join betrayal. And then after that, it also meant that I had to turn my back on BH. I mean, he made you his prison bitch, and I sure as hell wasn't trying to be next. So you can call these actions despicable, but I will not be insulted again. Unlike last year, I accept this award with pride, as a sign of my will to survive. Double cross of the year, double cross of the year means that two twisted Merc lasted through the era of the sin, and I'm damn well proud that I was able to do that. Oh wait a minute now! And here comes Andy Badwolf! One of the founders here in FAM and also one of the competitors in that fatal four-way Cyber Fan Day to determine the new, or sorry, the potential new leader here in FAM in general against the fight in a wall. Yeah, and we got also mentioned that on one of the first row twos that we saw coming up to this moment, Andy Badwall, 2TM, BH. And of course, Ron Buster, all in the center of the ring, and they're gonna fight in the main event at Cyber Fam Day. And if Bad Wolf wins, it could be a new age horizon for FAM. I still can't believe that Merck, during his time here in the ring, was trying to stay face and come up with excuses for his actions. Whoa, 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 what's all of this, huh? Is this some early campaigning to get people behind you for when you plan on becoming general manager? Give me a break, Merck. This is starting to get really old. How many times do you think you can fool us into believing that you're not really that bad of a guy, huh? The reality is that you're the biggest snake this place has ever seen and likely will ever see. You wouldn't know a good deed if we slapped you in the face. Everything you've ever done in your life has been to benefit you and you only. You don't give a damn about anybody else in this world. Oh, please shut the hell up. You're the biggest hypocrite on the roster. You come out here and you shove your morals down people's throats like, like you're some kind of saint. But you're nothing more than a wolf in sheep's clothing. In this story, Andy, you're the devil. And come Cyber Fam Day, not only will I beat you and the other two false prophets, but I will personally reveal your true colors in front of the entire world. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, Merc. You know what? I can't exactly confirm this as of yet, but I've been thinking about this whole AWOL thing, and there are certain parts of it that just don't make any sense to me. Too much information was known, too many things just perfectly fell into place. And I think there's someone else involved. 
And maybe, since you weren't there at the end of anniversary, when we all got our asses handed to us, perhaps it is you who is the missing link in this evil scene. It wouldn't be surprising, after all, it was your creation. <laughs> Trust me, Andy. If I were leading an army to take over this place, you would already know it. But hey, keep pointing fingers at me all you want. Everyone likes to blame God when things get hard. I'll see you at Cyber Fam Day. Well, that seems to be very interesting on the part of Andy Badwell. He, he makes a lot of sense. Everything just seems to be a bit too convenient for able to show up. How dare you back no, that true. up? How, how could you? Totem is a god. He doesn't need an army to help him out. I and mean, Merc was the one that created AWOL to begin with. And that's the past is the present. I don't know, Norm. I mean, something is going out, and I think Andy might be onto something. Uh, despicable. This is a surprise to say the least. Finally, showing himself after all the months he has hidden himself in solitude. Rennick, after losing his position as general manager here in this movement, and after being the victim of a, I would say, foreseen invasion. Rennick knew at the end of all this that something was about to give. He may not have predicted the mastermind that was Bash at the end of all this, he did everything to protect FAM, I believe. Now he has arrived, and he looks forward to respond to this entire invasion of AWOL. And you know what? You, you can ask me all you want, Norm. I have no idea what he's about to say right here, right now. You have no idea what he's about to say. Well, you know, I'm happy to see him here. Uh, I just want to know what's been going through his mind these past, you know, few months since, you know, since Famniversary 4. I, I just want to know what's been going on here. Renek, I believe right here, is about to make his stance. And honestly, I have an I have a feeling that right here he's going to open up and just tell us because you know he's a he is even though he's probably the most powerful guy in FAM history and still is, regardless if he's the GM or not, he's the most intimidating guy for sure. He's going to tell us how he feels truly. anniversary obviously didn't go as I planned. Somewhere along the way there was an error in my judgment and now that has cost me greatly. I am no longer the general manager of FAM. Instead my brother has taken the reins of leading this place and just as I predicted this place has already boiled down into chaos. A war has risen. The only people who could hope to do anything about it are at war with each other and this movement is once again about to take its final breath. I tried to warn all of you. I told you all that this day would come. But I can't help but take some of the blame. After all, I was the general manager so it was down to me to make sure that none of this ever happened. I wasn't able to do that. I was on the right track though. Looking in all the right places, which is why I took out that angel at the rumble. But my mark was evidently off. As Angel wasn't a true mastermind behind this operation. I got to give it to you, Bash. You played the game well to stay hidden away from me. Speaking of Bash, allow me to address this challenge. I understand what you did to me at the anniversary was just business. You needed to make an impact, and I was there for you to make that. But that's as far as me and you will ever go. 
I helped create the greatest movement this world has ever seen. I spent seven years at Aura, training with the most vicious and despicable people on the planet. Then, when I came back to this movement, not only did I have epic wars with my former brothers, but I reinvented the FAM and took it to new heights that I've never reached before. My legacy is evident, and I don't need to tarnish it by stepping into the ring with someone like yourself. My legacy. That brings me to what I'm really here to talk about today. Over the last 10 years, I've been on a journey that has changed the man I am to my very core. The things I've done, the carnage I've seen, the people i faced. I've torn people to pieces who I once loved. It was a journey not for the faint-hearted. But today, that journey comes to an end. anniversary, I didn't force my brother to put his career on the line because I wanted to crush his dreams. No! I made him put his career on the line because FAM just isn't big enough for two of us. Andro made that very clear when all he did for an entire season was chase after me. Even tarnishing great traditions like the winner of the Rumble challenging for the World Championship. The links from went to were great, but congratulations are in order, because at the end of the day, those links allow him to achieve what he desired to achieve, when he once again became the general manager of this place. But with him in charge, it means that I'll be walking away. This movement deserves to see more than just me and my brother fighting, and with the current situation that they've got it themselves in, they're going to need to focus as much as possible. So farewell. Oh man, are you kidding me? Really? Uh, uh, I mean, this this must be especially hard for you, man. I, I... no, I mean, Renick just reti retired. I guess. I don't know how to, I don't know how to react to this, I mean... I mean, what can I say? I mean... This is not... This is the, the last thing I expected from... From... From Rannick. I mean, just to end it all like that? I mean... We need... We need Rannick now more than ever! He... No, he can't... One year. One year ago, I was a face loss in the crowd. One year ago, I couldn't cut it to be in the rumble. One year ago, I was at the bottom of the mountain looking up at you who shined on top. But time has passed. I have grown. I have become more to where it's no longer me having to look up at you. Now I stand up here with you on your level. This year... Family Awards 2017 in my first main event. Not only will I free the global title from your treacherous grip, but I will deliver the first mortal blow to AWOL by leaving you unconscious in that ring. Showing the world your Russian strong style has nothing on a real man like me. Everyone loves watching a YouTuber get slapped around. I've essentially built an entire YouTube channel on that premise. And uh, Forever and Movement, they've got their own cheeky little uh, YouTubers division. But the YouTube division hasn't always sat quite as harmoniously with the other superstars in Forever and Movement. Some have thought it was just a publicity stunt. Are they just there to get views? I can tell you, they can get views. But this year, the YouTubers have been making an impact of their own in Forever and Movement, claiming the global championship and holding it within their ranks for almost an entire season. Some of the most intense and personal rivalries fam is ever laid host to has sat in the YouTuber division. Maybe I need to come and slap around some of the people People in this YouTuber division. Maybe I'm sure I could find a face that deserves a glorious kick in that division somewhere. 
But before we start throwing out the challenges, let's hear the nominations for YouTuber of the Year. YouTuber of the Year. Well, this is it, ain't it? The FAM Global Champion and my main man Element is about to defend his title in the biggest stage in WWE games history, Famniversary 4. Bushnick, let's face it, you've bitten off more than you can chew. And at Famniversary, we prove that when our team rips through yours. Your mouth has gotten into far too much trouble. At Famniversary, we close that mouth. Permanently. Yes, sir, you know my steam. You boys have been nothing but a pain in my side ever since your cocky attitudes got the better of you at Fam Survival. And at Fam Anniversary, I'm going to cost you boys your pride when I prove once and for all that I am better than you. On Saturday, 7th of October, Wrestle Talks Luke Owen and Ollie Davis, yes, I'm talking in the third person now, will show up at the biggest stage in WWE games history and show you watching here forever of movement management and the whole goddamn roster that we are ready. Let me open up like this a door knocker. Show you how I lay a down, boy, so proper. No scallop or much class. A gem fell, none of your nose like a mustache. My pen splash. A quick There it goes! Day of justice! Cause you dope, cause my hooks is fresh crack So dope, I'm a certified meth lab Pen act is been at it, got pen fresh Horn lines with my pen game, Pinterest That's June, Hall of Fame, Dollar Gang Something big like Wallace, you pocket change All of our presidents Oh, see your justice Face need your running mate, yes Up, up, and away we go Up, up, and it's making me glow Yes Up, up, and away we go Up, up, and like it at A very broken one at that. Oh god! That touched off power driver! Reverse our work is right on the money. Yo, I got more raps than a mummy, honey. This be the boogie to jump. I don't know whether to kiss FAM or slap the F out of it. Mr. Big Show hasn't had the biggest of luck when it comes to FAM, but tonight it can all change. Show you how it's done. This guy is so deep and all broad, and that's why we call him the absolute champion. The YouTube wrestling figures heavyweight champion, I should say. It grips toy show. Right, I'll make buses go blind. This guy, from what we see from the messages he's shown us at the Rumble, he's all serious. And just by looking at his size alone, he he's not here to play games. I'm Hey folks, this is just one crazy moment after another. How the hell did that even happen? How, how did that even happen? How did they even get these teams together? Are you? Are you for real now? He won! Brandon Collins actually won YouTuber of the Year! Hey, this is this is as real as it gets, man. He led the forefront of the YouTubers war going into Famiversary. And you know, he absolutely deserves this honor. You mean he was at the front lines? He was not even a drummer boy. He got pinned by Mr. Big Show up in less than five seconds. He was at the front lines of the war, man. And you know it, and you just don't want to admit it. He is a god of the YouTubers. You guys, you guys don't understand what this means for me. The start that I've had here in FAM hasn't been the greatest of beginnings. First, the powers that be, Brendan Place, not being able to find me a spot in the Rumble match. 
and then the lackluster performance for me at Fam Anniversary. As I said, it's not been the best of years for myself, but despite all of that and despite the odds for this award being severely stacked against me, all of you, the fans, the FAM universe, you still believed in me. So all I can say is thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much. I promise that going forward, I won't let you guys down like I have done in the past. This is a new era for Brandon Collymore, starting with whatever special surprise Brandon plays has for me at Cyber Fam Day. Again, thank you. What? Oh, I don't know if this has happened. Oh, Brandon Collymore? Uh, would you like to remind me just exactly who you are, please? This award could have gone to so many better choices. I mean, we've got Grimm's Toy Show, Goran Perkins, Pulse, Legend. I mean, hell, I would have taken Tom Cushney over you. Uh, I just can't believe this. This has ruined everything. Now a big announcement won't be nearly as impactful. But I guess the show must go on, nonetheless. The surprise that I've talked about earlier this week is that at Cyber Fam Day, we will introduce a brand new championship to the world known as the FAM YouTubers Championship. A title that finally and officially cements the YouTubers role into this movement. And well, unfortunately, since Colin Moore here won the YouTuber of the year, he will be one of the two men who will compete for this award come Cyber Fam Day. But I don't expect you to walk out of that event as champion. In fact, I don't even know if you walk out of that event at all. Because your opponent for the first ever FAM YouTubers Championship match at Cyber Fam Day is this man. Oh my! The Silent Warrior Element! Him and Brendan Collymore are about to go head to head at Cyber Fam Day for the new YouTubers Championship! You speak about being my equal. Let's not forget who is the champion out of us too. Let's not forget that the anniversary you walked out a failure. Because you couldn't banish Darren Dastardly. Like you promised. Well, I kept my word and saved the global championship from those who were destroying its prestige. You're out here calling me a sellout, calling me disrespectful. But I don't owe anything to these people, and I especially don't owe anything to outside world nobodies like Kellen Vega and Peppermint P. I join up with Bash and the growing flame that will engulf FAM, known as AWOL. And if you want to take a shot at me, at AWOL, you're welcome to try. At FAMI Awards, in a Cold War steel cage match, I will turn Mountain Rushmore into Mother Russia. Welcome to the United States of Anarchy. Shocking twist of events for the YouTubers division. I don't think anybody thought that freaking Brandon Collins would win YouTuber of the Year to begin with. But, but, but now we also have a YouTubers Championship match between him and Element taking place at Cyber Fam Day? The YouTubers division is certainly starting to pick up now. However, we have to move on to the main event of this evening. The last match we have in store for you tonight. And ironically, it's the title that the YouTubers lost at their anniversary. That's right. It is time for the FAM Global Championship match. In just a few moments, Len Frisco and the Archimus will come down to the string. The cage will be lowered and we will bear witness to the first ever Cold War Steel Cage match. Back at the beginning of the season, Rom stated that all members of AWOL must defend their championships between Dan and Cyber Fam Day, which led to an Archimus going on a wrecking spree, taking out all opponents that had been laid out in front of him before the matches even began, as he deemed them as unworthy to challenge for his championship. Lance Frisco then stepped up to the plate, rescuing one of Anarchimus' fallen victims from further decimation and challenging Anarchimus 
two-way match in the process. Brown Buster then made the match official, adding the Cold War steel case stipulation to assure that an Archimus won't have any option but to stand and fight. The first two times that an Archimus held the Global Championship, he lost the title in his first defense. Will Frisco become the new champion when history repeats itself? Or will the Russian Men of Steel's reign continue to march on? American Ring General making his way to the ring waving the American flag and quite honestly was it's going to be the most brutal matchup of his entire career now take nothing away from his belt he had with Darren Dastardly that was a very brutal and very dangerous matchup in and of itself but the problem is that right now we go from a devious dastardly to a ruthless Russian and an Archimus and this time it's in the confines of a steel cage and not just any steel cage now since we're talking about an American and a Russian of course we have to put in the essence that this is in fact nothing but war a cold war yeah and you know what Lance Frisco seems to put himself into these type of situations where he faced very vicious individuals he did it just so he can save one of Anarchy Moses quote unquote victims from any further decimation and with that he was granted an opportunity for the global championship Russian man of steel himself the current global champion you can you know as tough as he is and as vicious as he may come out to be the fact that there is some sort of curse when it comes to Anarchimus he is a three-time global champion and when he was the champion the first two times he lost that title on his first defense probably if I was a betting man I wouldn't know what to pick because now with him being allied with AWOL and plus with all the experiences gained on the throughout the year plus being a number one contender against Merc that, that definitely helped us well gain a little bit of experience I don't know what to pick either Russia in AWOL or America in FAM well you know I'm not picking nor Russia or America here I'm picking just straight strength and power and every piece of viciousness that is an Archimus in this matchup you have the right to make your choice right there, Norm. In my opinion, though, the curse, I think it's eating the way at the mind of Anarchimus. And Frisco, with all of the accomplishments he achieved throughout the year, and with all the experience he has gained outside of FAM, I think he has the advantage in the steel cage. And here we go, the main event of the Vammy Wars underway. Oh my goodness. And with a salute right there, Anarchimus was not going to oblige that. And these two are about to get it on in a vicious war of our cuts. Oh my god, yeah, both of these men known for their uppercuts in this type of, not even in this type of matchup, just in, within their moveset, within their style. Must be your style, strong style. Oh, 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 he was oh. going for it. And then the ring general once again, proving to us why he's deserving of the title as he goes for it again into a clutch. And he's dragging it out of Narcos's neck, but not for long. Yeah, hits him right there with the noose lock. Oh, Anarchy hold already! And he's got it sinched it! No, oh, no! Spoke too soon as well there. Yeah, he saw him try to go for the Anarchy hold there for a second. That happened with Lance Frisco. And now that battle of uppercuts continues underway as Frisco lands the first blow as he continues the onslaught now on Archimus and now it's caught him into the corner oh here we go baby Hello. this is what you gotta expect to see here out of Van Archimus and, and Lance Frisco oh god oh but Frisco now returns with another one of his own into an American uppercut oh, oh! caught 
with that Russian kitchen sink. Or as I like to call that, a nice good good old shin kick. Oh, Jesus. And Dragon Screw following it up, and now the game plan has been set for Anarchimus. The current global champion is gonna work on Frisco's leg. His left leg to be more specific. He just gonna let that out. He's not gonna let that in. Yeah, he says started on it, might as well keep a hold on it. And he does with another hold. I don't know, that's like a half Vidian deathlock, I presume. And he's wrenching on it. And he's not letting Frisco gain any sort of breather. But Frisco fighting it out. And the damage has been done. You can feel it right now. But Frisco tackling down the Russian. That was shot of adrenaline right there as Frisco back on his feet trying to sell the fact that he's not been hammered at all by the onslaught of an attack on his leg. Oh wait! Uh, oh! Hammer throw on nothing but steel and Anarchimus is feeling the punishment! Wait what? Oh! Oh! Smart right there! Use his momentum! Oh god! Not so smart right there. Not so smart at all! Freaking Anarchimus like a Russian Spider-Man almost! just climbed and take advantage of the momentum being caused by Frisco. Frisco now pounding, just pounding away on the Russian Man of Steel. And Anarchimus, the global champion right now, is on a world of hurdle. I don't think he's ever been a predicament like this before. Oh! American uppercut right there at the back of the nape. Right into the corner now. Then a connect that time, and then Archimus follows it up with an onslaught of kicks. Trapping Frisco between a rock and a hard place. And the hard place big, those kicks! Hey, Jesus Christ! Shoulder buckling on the knee of Frisco. And I think that one move alone might have done so much damage that it might have twirled the outpost of Versco. Oh, quite indeed. And like I said, once you get an uh, injured part, you got to keep working on it. And that's exactly what he's continued to do on Lance Frisco. Not done yet. As he's now picking apart the Ray General Spicer with a face wash. Oh, he's gonna follow it up with something that spells probably the end for Frisco. And Archimo! Oh! <laughs> Diving Russian uppercut, falling it up with a sent on. And this is what the global champion is known for picking apart opponent with the most vicious of strong style moves you'll ever see in your entire life. Wait a minute! Oh! Russian suplex! Oh, he was going for it! Spit out power bomb! Frisco now with the hook! Ow! Oh. No! And the champion hangs on! Again! You gotta watch out for Anarchimus' deadly combinations. He was going for the Lariat, but ends up being captured by the General like a prisoner of war and gets caught with a spin out power bomb. But much to my chagrin, I should say, Anarchimus hangs on. <laughs> oh my god! An ambitious right hook on the part of Frisco and an American uppercut one more time. To a decent Archimus at that end. Oh God! Knee drop right on the face, pummeling and Archimus is facing. And you know what that means right now? We're just only a few moments away after all the attacks, after all the uppercuts and all the exploder suplex. This is it for Archimus. Beautiful right there from Lance Frisco. Well, he's got to stay on an Archimus if he wants that global championship. He's gonna take your advice, Norm. He's about to sell the score. Ah, uh, boy, 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 boy! And Arkimo just pounces back with a back body drop. No, sir, said Anarchimus right there.
Oh my lord, he's just pumbling that one, Frisco. You said to expect a war in this Cold War cage match, and that's exactly what we're getting between these two gentlemen. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh my god, beautiful package. Knee breaker right there. Ever since the match has begun, Anarchimus has been working on the legs of Frisco, and I think it's paying dividends right now at the end of this matchup. Or at least I believe it's the end, because right now Frisco seems like he's lifeless. You know, that's what work on that leg has pretty much done to Lance Frisco. He's, he's been rendered useless, so he can't even escape the cage. Oh, but I think an argument is going to play dividends on that part too. He's going to escape the entire matchup on his own and leave here with the title. Edwin Frisco, bad luck at all, still manages to get out the three of four. And he needs to catch up to an Archibus. And he's tried to do so. I don't even know how he moved that fast to get over there. No. Oh my, a stare down on top of the steel contraption. And these two are in dangerous territory. Oh boy. My lord, these two are pummeling each other back and forth. Forearm shot after forearm shot. One with Frisco. And he's got an Archibus. Timber, baby. Frisco, you just need to know. Oh my god, he went for the crossbody, but caught. Oh my lord. Power bomb. My goodness. Oh, look at this. Lifting stretch muffler right there by an Archimus. I don't know how to react to that. I just caught Frisco diving from the top and lands him like a freaking mine in a powerbomb style. Frisco, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how he's managing to pull himself up after going through that, whatever you want to call it. There was an Armageddon powerbomb I ever saw one. You see them right, just right back at it here, Ramara. And oh! Now that's what you call coming back up with a whale. Now look at that. Frisco is about to put on the world of pain on Anarchimus with an old school American ankle lock, baby. He's about to make him squeal, and he's about to make him pay, and he's just one more move away from becoming the global champion of this movement. Oh no, I spoke to so once again. I, do, I tend to do that a lot, actually. <laughs> and Archimus, though, chops down Frisco. And now it's his turn for his target to be acquired. And Archimus, sizing up. The ring general for one final assault! Oh! oh! He gets caught and he finds nothing but boot on the ground. I don't even know where he pulled that out from. Oh my god. Oh boy. Now Frisco is in complete control as he's got the Russian dazed and quite honestly, he's got the Russian tangled. Just like that on the top rope. Uh-oh. Oh, we gotta see it. The powerful super blast. Oh. Is that Frisco's time to show? Oh, man, do I speak soon or what? And Narkimus just bounces back up like nothing. And the strength of the Russian Superman. Oh, he held on. He held on there. Dragon! Dragon suplex! Lariat! Oh, oh no! Frisco! He tried to go for that Russian sickle, but it was immediately countered. Now whiplash rip Courtney right there! And it looks like the target may be acquired right now! As Frisco acquires it and nails it! And the Russian is down! And Frisco, this is time! The moment this year and the global championship is about to come home where it belongs in forever a movement with the hands of Vlad Fris Oh wait, wait a minute! Those damn resurgence! What are they doing here? They're not gonna allow Frisco to escape! 
and an Archimus, an Archimus now, he's got Frisco from the back, no! Frisco had to make a decision right there, meet the resurgence or get back in that cage. Gotta be kidding me. This steel cage was meant to keep AWOL from interfering. But it backfired. No! That's it. Damn it! And all it took was a Carolyn driver to take out the cybernetic big boss of FAM. No, it wasn't just that. It was those damn resurgents interfering and Larry saving an Archimus' neck. I swear, you know what? An Archimus is both blessed and cursed because the curse still lived on. If the resurgents weren't there, Frisco would have walked out the champion and an Archimus would have once again lost the title on his first defense. But once again, while you're in the pocket of a wall, good things tend to happen. And you know what? Lance Frisco gave it his all and he should be in my eyes the global champion right now but the FM Awards will end with the last match being big big like this I have no words to describe this in all honesty folks technically Lance Frisco could have dropped to the outside met the resurgence and been global champion but he chose to go back in the ring he chose to meet an Archimus. he chose to stall and that is what cost him ultimately in this contest. Yeah, sure. Research is coming out. Oh, by themselves wanting, but they had weapons. They had a baseball bat and the chair. For, not to mention the steel cage to trap Frisco. But nonetheless, the fact is that the global championship stays in AWOL. And then Archimus used to be the guy that I actually looked up to because he was the guy that actually fought pound for pound without any help. Welcome to Cyber Fan Day, where you will write our history and our future. I think what separates Forever and Movement from any other wrestling based entity on YouTube is match quality. I think anyone who's watched more than one show will agree that these guys do matches best. That the best thing about the Forever and Movement shows are the matches. I mean, and this is, I mean, as someone who also makes uh, WWE matches on YouTube, I can hold my hands up and say that these guys are the best. And I think a lot of other creators aspire to be able to put on some of the contests that the superstars in Forever A Movement put on. So I reckon this award is probably going to be the hardest one to call because these are the nominations for Match of the Year. Match of the Year. Here we go! The 
battle of the ages, and the set is done already! Oh wait! Oh my god, I've never seen Red Big Ben handed like this! He's gonna catch him! No! Red is so powerful! Oh, what? Oh my god! No! Jewel of an entire division is on the line. Collided with an argument like death, following that oh. with an elbow. Oh. Super Russian uppercut. And now going for a rebound. He's just talking about the strength of Element there. And oh my god! And oh! Wait a minute! Oh, he caught him! Who's got my missile drop kick? And now the silent foyer has got the Russian Superman in a tornado spin. Oh, shell shock setting, baby! Here we go! And now give us this trap! Oh no, oh no, oh no! Shell shock! Here goes the crap that I crunched from the top rope! Out of it! And now give us no! Suplex by Narcimus! Pulls back on his feet! Rush it! With his own Russian suplex! An element! Element now shows us why he's a superman as well! Oh my god! They both get up! Oh my! I can't wait! Oh wait a second! Oh he got him! Anarchy hold! The Anarchy hold is sixth in! He's not going to be so solid right here! He's got the all of it! And he's That's got it. the Global Championship! Yes! And Arky was done it! And here we go! It is the God versus the Messiah! I quit match rules! Cross line! And here we go! The God just got striking down! Why? Oh my God! He's gonna set down the serpent! Put him down! Put him down! Oh no, stop this man! Stop! Oh my! That is so sweet! Oh my! Sonic here with the chair! What the hell is Merc taking? Oh man, if he actually connects this. Oh, 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 oh! Oh, whoa! Good stop right there! Good stop! He almost hit him, but that just means it's the other way around him. No, never mind. Oh, good counter. Black hair on. Well done. That's full plate. That's a full plated armor. Yes, it is. Oh! Oh! Steel chair combined with that plate of the armor. It's double death for the snake. Quit, DH. Quit. <laughs> Super flex time! No way! He hits it! I think he landed on the Kindle stick! Jack Hammer! No! About to backfire the plan the Heron set up! No! Right through the double table! With a reaction! Oh! Wait a minute! What? Wait! No, you can't! No! Wait a minute! Murk! Murk! Fancy 
seeing you here, Eve. Where are you going, Eve? The fun's only just getting started. Don't you, Eve? You stay away! Hold on, bitch! Black and gold, power, boom! Merc, good night! Punch! Man, he just busted his eardrum! Holy s! Oh no! He squeezed the ear! And the blood! Uh, uh, that blood is pouring it! Black hair has got burnt! I quit! I quit! I burn quit! Regardless of the outcome, this is going to be the proudest moment for both of these athletes. Oh my goodness! No, I don't think it even worked! Best with a shot of adrenaline just came from that beating and he's launching his own beating on the virtue. And here comes the boom, boom, bye bye, boom! To a massive dive from Mount Olympus! Oh, 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 oh. oh! Oh no, this. Is it time? This could be bittersweet. Oh, baby, here comes the symphony! Wait! Checkmate! Oh! 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 Spear! Oh, but it ain't enough! The warrior pouncing back up! Like a goddamn madman! Shut up! What? What? Oh! Better sweet symphony! And then we're talking about the fight moments of my table! No! Oh, no. No, Nick, that well, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to go and... Uh, no, oh. This ain't looking good for any of these two! This career suicide! Nick! Nick! No! Flash moves out of the way! Just in time! He's taking him to the tour of Suplex City! I think, no, not even a tour! He's making a permanent president there! What? I was count! Oh! Wait! No! Whoa! Fast bottom! Match over! Count to a thousand! What? What? Are you kidding me? Or, or, oh, oh no! He's going to use his own maneuver. Now this could absolutely be bittersweet. He will connect it and it's over! Whoa! Oh, he picked him up there, no bash! Oh, no! Hold on! And now Nick is the one that's got bash with the bash bottom! Fighting his way out of it! Nick going for one last strike! Hold on! Bash bottom! The end of this, who will be the one to reign as champion? Oh, bittersweet! Oh! Super kick by Bash! It's gonna be bittersweet ending! No! And Bash and Nick staring at each other one more oh my. I think they just angered the warrior! Bash bottom! Whoa! And the Dream City Kid! Bittersweet! Checkmate! Whoa! He turned it into a Bash bottom! Teams! And there he is, the man that backstabbed every single person, not only in FAM, but every fan. He, he fooled us all. 
We thought he was the new light and shining armor here in FAL, but it turned out he was nothing but the devil in disguise. But you know what? At the end of the day, yeah, 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 okay. That match he had with against Nick Virtue at Feminiversary, truly a classic, and that should get an award for it. However, the fact that this man is gonna come out and claim it all for himself, the self-proclaimed leader of a wall is leading this war, and he is looking to take any prisoner of war and make him suffer. Wowee! The energy in this building tonight has been wild! Are you all having a good time? Yes, that's what I like to hear! It's been a great night for us in AWOL. Nova and Dastardly both won awards. The Britmen and Anarchimus all successfully managed to defend their championships. And now this, match of the year for the clinic that me and Nick put on at Famniversary. I mean, can't say I'm surprised. We did after all outshine everybody on that card and evidently all year two. But in all seriousness, I've already spoken about the match at length. You all know what it meant to me to finally put that part of my life to rest. But now, it's time to move on to other things. Other matches. But who on earth on this roster is worthy enough to face me for my FAM World Championship? The one man who I thought was worthy enough just went ahead and retired earlier on tonight. I mean, he didn't even give it a second thought. Just brushed me aside. Yo, Roma, come here for a second. I got a few questions for you about your brother Ranik, and you know what? Rom too. I got some questions about him as well. Wait, what? Come on, man, I'm not gonna hurt ya. Just got a few questions, is all. What? Rom, what is it with these two guys, huh? Your twin can never seem to work out who the real threat is. Your elder can't seem to realize that the biggest match of his career is on the table right now. Just tell me, what makes their judgment so clouded? Well, that's... you, you see... Oh, hang on. You're gonna tell me is some family issues, right? Some stuff that happened back when you all were kids. Alright, uh, that's, that's a bit personal. You don't have to go into that. But Rannick has the opportunity here to do something that not only he's never done, but Rom's never done too. And that's become the FAM World Champion. Surely that's something he wants for his career, to go down as the very best of his brothers. Look, you gotta look at it like this, man, alright? Are you gonna say that's, that's not what drives him, right? That he doesn't care about living in the shadow of his younger brother? But how can that not drive a man? How can Rannick wake up every single day knowing that after falling out with his own flesh and blood, that he was the one that lost and was made to look the fool over it? Listen, Bash, it's, it's, it's a family thing. It's, it's complicated. I guess you're right, Roma. Tell me something. Do you love your brothers? Is that a rhetorical question? Of course I do. More than you can ever imagine. That's nice. You guys are... sweet. Whoa, 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 wait! What is he, what are you doing? Put... Ramar, put him down! Put him down! Put... Oh my god. I don't know what's going on! Oh my god! Get help out here! Get help out here! We may disagree on certain things, but that is one thing I will not get. Bash, don't. Why is he lowering the cage? This man is out of control, and we need to get help out here. Oh, brush me off. Brush the champ off! Who the hell do you think you are, Rannick? 
I ain't nothing like these vermin former brothers you've been picking off this last season. I strike fear into the heart of guns. I put Andy Badwell in a body bag. I am 10,000 times the man the Black Heron is. So I hope you're still in this building tonight, Rannick, or otherwise it's gonna be a long night for your brother right here. This beating will not stop until you come down to this ring and accept the match for Cyber Fan Day. Oh my god, and he's gonna continue to attack Romar. I. He's done nothing but sit here next to me and, and, and just give what's going on and, and, and Bash just using this abuse of power to, to assault him. Oh my God. P please, somebody. No, this can't happen. This can't happen. Oh, just rubbing his... What? B Bash, stop! God. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus! It's Rannick! Rannick is coming out here! Oh, my God. Someone to up this cage, do something here. Bash, I accept. Rannick accepted the challenge for Cameron Bash. Even though he's a demon, that man still has a heart, or that demon still has a heart, actually. Wait, is he gonna still attack? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh. Rannick's brother, why? Who was that that just... Oh, no! You've got to be kidding me. Robin Storm has made his way out here, attacking Rannick from behind with a steel chair and... A Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. Now, now we get Brandon Young. Oh, my God. I. Both of these men were in the, the FAM Invitational. Both eliminated before tonight. And now they're. It looks like they've joined up here with Cameron Bash to just. And look, now it's taking not just one, not just two, but three men to take down this monster, to take down Rannick. Oh no, oh no. Nat, oh my god! You know what, Bash looking down like he's almighty here. But just think about it, at Cyber Fam Day, it's gonna be hell to pay for Cameron Bash. Not only did he take down the monster here tonight, but he put his hands on his little brother, Romar. There's gonna be hell fury released on Cameron Bash. You can guarantee it.
Right, here we go. This is the main event, so to speak, of the evening. Now, this is the biggest award uh, that we're going to be giving out tonight. Congratulations to everyone who's won an award. Thank you to Forever Movement for letting me host. Was genuinely made up about it. And maybe this might not be the last time you see N60 Sean in this movement. But this isn't. This section isn't about me by any means. This is about the great superstars who have competed over the last year in this movement. This is the ultimate family award, the award that truly cements who is currently on top within this movement. It's an award that solidifies careers into the pages of history forever. Here are the nominees for Superstar of the Year. Superstar of the Year. you all haven't forgot about me. None of you believed me, did you? I told you, I told all of you, the title I want is the title of General Manager. And at anniversary, the prophecy will be fulfilled and I will become the Lion King. anniversary. I'm gonna kick your ass all over this ring until you're black, blue, and pissing yellow. And when it's all said and done, it will be my hand that is raised at the end of the night. And I will continue to be the world champion of FAM. No more masks. No more gods. No more same old bullshit. We are the change we wish to see in the world. We will rest at nothing to fix this movement. We are ascending with our legacy. We are a wall. At Royal Rumble, YouTubers didn't have the numbers advantage. And so they went over the ropes one by one. We are more alike than you think, Element. We both have a goal to bring dignity to global championship. But there is one problem. We're on the opposite sides of barricades. You still represent YouTubers, and I still represent FAM. I am the heart of this movement. I will do anything to bring this title back to FAM. I have slayed every single YouTuber on my way. I am the YouTuber Slayer. And Element, you are just another name on my list. It's like I just came in. Since I have been here, I have destroyed your teacher Randy, your friend Dunt, and I have managed to do in 8 minutes what you couldn't do in 8 years. And that is defeat Black Heron. The mighty founders have fallen before me. You may have faced wars and survived, but at the anniversary, you're about to go up against the most wicked element in existence, and that is reality. And the reality is that you have no chance against me. I can't help but win, yeah. But the anniversary. The only thing that is going to be handed to Merck is the beating of his life, as he yet again continues to do the one consistent factor of his career when he says the words, I quit. FAM cannot continue to go on the way it has. I am not talking about becoming leader and just running things the way they always have before. The slate needs to be wiped clean and a new system needs to be put in place to ensure the situations like AWOL, situations like betrayal, don't happen ever again. It's like I just came in. I was made for this. I show the world I'm stronger. Prove it to him, I'm a fighter. I can't help but win. Cause I was made for this. Just trying to recover here, and of course, we have to congratulate our new GM of FAM, winning it back at Anniversary 4 by defeating the men we saw laid out here in the ring earlier in, in Rannick to become GM. But 
At least right now, it doesn't seem he's too concerned. Maybe he is. I, I don't know what the mind state of Ron Buster is right now. Maybe he saw what happened earlier, and maybe he's going to retaliate here tonight in his his acceptance for speech or his acceptance speech. We'll we'll see. I, I'm still flabbergasted by what we just saw earlier. You know, seeing what has happened here tonight has really made me open my eyes just a bit more. Perhaps I may have underestimated AWOL. Maybe they are a bigger threat than I had originally believed. Not only have they managed to retain two titles so far, but after what they did to my two brothers earlier tonight? Oh, you've escalated this past the point of business. You've just gone and made it personal. The Superstar of the Year award means that this last year I have been on a terrifying roll. Every challenge that was laid out in front of me during these last 365 days has been knocked down and conquered and I'm going to continue running on with this momentum. So come Cyber Fam Day, BH, Andy and Merc will feel the new side of ROM, the side of ROM that had won the Royal Rumble and the side of me that managed to become the general manager by beating the man that you all feared, Rennick. You will feel that side of me and when it's all said and done and my hand is raised high at the end of the night, whoever is left with Golden Wall, you're next. And oh no, this is the worst time for you to come out here and start anything with Thrum Buster. But back at Fan Anniversary 3, BH and Rom had a, a very heated match in a Hell in a Cell, mind you. And and of course tonight he's gonna come out here and and I guess confront Rom. And again, wrong, wrong time to do that when we have a wall on the loose. After what we just saw earlier, the, the worst possible thing that you can do and of course him as well as Rom and 2TM and Andy Badwell are gonna face off at Cyber Fam Day to, to decide the new GM once again of FAM. I'm glad you're starting to see the lights Rom. That makes a difference from the kind of stuff you usually do. Nice to see that some things are beginning to change around here. But make no mistake about it, that doesn't mean I've changed my stance on you at all. I still think that you're the worst man possible for this job. I'm just happy that we're on the same page when it comes to the cancer called AWOL. Many people question why this match is even happening at such a crucial time in FAM. But those people need to understand that things cannot go on until this match is taking place. Me. Ron, Andy and Merck all have very different ideas not only for how we should deal with Haywall, but how FAM should be following this flag. Only one of us can come out on top as a leader, but once it happens, we all need to get on the same page. No more fighting, no more arguing amongst ourselves. An undisputed leader needs to be crowned once and for all, and then that man is to carry us to victory in this war against AWOL. Oh, damn, here we go again. BH acting all high and mighty in front of the FAM universe. What a shocker. You know what? I love you guys. Seriously, you fans are the heart and soul of this place, but you, at the same time, drive me nuts. You guys cheer for whack jobs like this? This is the same man that has betrayed both me and all of you on so many occasions. Should I give you all a little history lesson? There was one threat before AWOL, and that was another group by the name of Betrayal. And who was the founder? This guy right here. So with that being said, BH, I will not have you stand here and talk down on me like I'm some sort of child. 
You say we all need to get on the same page? Well, you could have started with that instead of coming out the minute I stepped down from the position that I had rightfully earned and that you still took away from me four years ago. This match is not for you. It's not for Andy and definitely it's not for Merc. No, this match is for me. It's for me to prove that I have what it takes to beat you three dirtbags who doubted me and betrayed me so that we can all finally move on and deal with the bigger issues at hand under my control. Bash was right earlier tonight though. More than anything in the world, I would love, I would love for things to go back to the way things were before in FAM. When everything was peaceful. But the one thing Bash doesn't understand is that I realize that unfortunately that can never happen. I'm not stupid, alright? The scars on my back remind me to never fully stand side by side with snakes like you ever again. However, BH, for just a short amount of time, you need to be my ally so that we can deal with this common threat. Then to hell with our differences. But first, I will make all of you respect me by Cyber Fam Day. The match at Cyber Fam Day is deadlocked as these four GMs, past GM and the current GM, 2TM, Andy Badwell, BH, and Rom will fight to determine the leader heading into battle against Daywall.